In the last two videos, I showed you a rough overview of a Bitwig Studio. And in today's video, we actually do some music and I want to take the uh, sound design approach where we start to designing some sounds and don't focus too much on uh, the musical side. So let's start and um, open up Bitwig Studio. Use my code POLARITY in the shop to save 10% on the price and support my channel. So my last two videos about this topic um, were about the, all the surroundings of the Arranger window inside Bitwig Studio. And today we want to talk about the Arranger itself, where everything happens. The magic happens where you create your song, where you create notes, where you mangle your audio and so on. So as you can see here, when you start up a new project or an empty project, you have by default two track types. You have the instrument track and you have an audio track. The instrument track is, as the name says, you can uh, put an instrument on it and you can create clips by double clicking here on the empty space on this track. And in this clip, you can create notes and trigger with these notes uh, the instrument. And today we want to create some instruments and we want to bounce down uh, the created sounds. And then we have some kind of uh, multiple sounds and then we create some kind of collage of these sounds. So this is basically the sound design approach. And so I called it where you don't focus too much on the notes. Um, I mean, you have to choose a note um, for all your tracks maybe, but we don't care for harmony or chords or something like this. So um, at first, maybe we start with something um, you are maybe familiar uh, on my channel with these uh, crit pitches I do. So maybe just load up some of my generative um, crit patches. You can download this in my GitHub, of course or under these videos, you can search on my channel and you find um, to all of these crit patches a video and you can listen to it. And maybe we go to something I made recently. Uh, maybe I go for this one here, load it up. And this is how it looks. And as you know it, when I hit play, it generates a random pattern of notes it generates a random rhythm. It generates random sounds that are played. And I think all these sounds are in the key of D sharp minor. So as you can see as a pitch quantize. So I'm in a scale, of course, but I don't care so much. I basically can uh, transpose this around and to every key I choose in the beginning of my track. So in this case, it's D sharp minor, okay? So I can use um, the selection button here or maybe create an empty clip here. And I know when I hit play, everything that's uh, coming out of this device is D sharp minor. Okay, so what I want to do is I want this as an audio file. So what I do is I select this track here or go to the bottom half of this track. You can see the cursor is changing here and I can select some kind of region, maybe this, and just uh, go right click and hit bounce. And I go for post fader and 32 bit and I deselect dither. So all you have to do is click post fader, select 32 bit and no dither and then select OK. And now uh, Bitwig starts to bounce out um, the generative patch here we just loaded up as an audio file. And now this is basically static. We can use this um, as an audio file. Okay, so now we have something we can start on and we know it's D sharp minor, so we can uh, maybe go here and make it a bit shorter. And we also know the BPM because we, we didn't change it, right? So we can up it here to maybe 120. Maybe go for loop section here. So 
So this is our starting point. So um, maybe we add some written elements to it. So something like a kick drum and we go here for an e-kick, of course. E minus kick. So double click it again. So we have an empty clip and in this clip we create some kick drums. Um, and changed our tuning to uh, D sharp zero or maybe D sharp one. Maybe we go for D sharp zero. Okay, so maybe we add, uh, we select this here and give this a name, generative example. Maybe we select this and hit Control and G to make a group out of it. Call it music. And on this group, we create a tool device. And we want, of course, to create an audio sidechain. And this audio sidechain is modulating the amplitude. And we're getting our signal from our kick drum. And maybe change here the... Okay, maybe we make this a bit quieter. So now we have something basic running just by using a generative patch, which uh, created a note sequence for us, created a sound for us and some kind of ambience. So we, so we can use um, generative patches uh, as a sound source you sample for yourself, right? So it's not like, um, because under some of my videos, under my generative patches, someone wrote, why, why would someone use this? It sounds so generic. But you can use it as a sample source. So you don't need to sample your um, favorite uh, pop artist. You can just sample yourself or create uh, generative patches and just sample this, right? So um, now we have something basic running. Maybe delete here the first two tracks because we don't need it. Our generative patch is muted because we bounce it out to this track and we create an e-kick here with a simple pattern. And we have a tool device here with an audio sidechain happening every time, every, every time the kick hits. Uh, we uh, lower the amplitude of the music uh, group. So maybe add something like a bass, right? So I go for a phase four device and I create a clip and I know it's D sharp, right? So I'm going just for D sharp. So it's nothing, it's pretty simple. All I have to do is remember I'm using D sharp as in scale so I can go straight for D sharp. So maybe create a note and we now try to create some interesting patterns for the baseline. So maybe you make the loop section here a bit shorter. Okay. Maybe go one octave lower. And now we start and design some kind of sound. It doesn't need to be a special sound. It, it's just for the example, right? Um, if you want to dive into sound design, there are a lot of uh, videos on YouTube, also on my channel about how you can design certain sounds. So it's not about the sound itself. It's more about the approach, how you can create a track with a sound design approach. So now I just tweak it until it sounds quite okay. Maybe add something like a modulator, classic LFO. Okay, 
maybe make the sound a bit more fancy. So I'm using here a FX2 device, which um, splits the frequency band in half. So I'm going for a split frequency of 300 Hertz. And at the top end, I'm using a reverb. I'm just looking for interesting uh, accidents here. Yeah, maybe something like this. So now we can start and uh, bounce out some of the stuff here we created with the. Uh, maybe get, make it, make it a bit louder. Okay, so maybe bounce this out. Um, we just do the same thing we done with the generative patch. We just select here a bit, a region and go to bounce, the same settings, bounce it out. And now we have some kind of audio. And I move this audio track here down to the music uh, crew because we have already here an sidechain applied. So um, I mute the source. Uh, of the bass here and we have just our audio. So now we can duplicate this. Okay, so now we create another sound here with the same from the same source from our phase four. We just change up some of the settings. Something like this. So bounce it out. Uh, move it here to the top uh, group. And maybe do another one. Maybe do something like this, bounce it out, move it up here to the group. Okay, so mute the source track again and now just listen to the uh, audio stuff. And now we can start and start and rearrange some of the stuff here. Maybe put this here and cut out something here. Okay, so it's all about creating interesting patterns so the the ear gets always something new to listen to. You can also use here the Alt key and you can see that the cursor changes and you can move the waveform inside the clip around. And then you can Okay, so this is basically the, the whole approach to this. You create multiple sounds and then you create collages of these sounds. 
and there's no musical uh, stuff happening. I mean, there is, you have to make sure that you are on the right key, right? But... So maybe bounce this out for small alteration in our riff here. Maybe use it here at the end. It's all about keeping it interesting. As you can see, you can um, evolve on that. You can create much, much more sounds to make this more interesting. The more sound, the more variation there is happening, the more interesting the song is in the end. And it's all basically just one note. So there's no harmony change um, or something complex happening, right? You can make it interesting to the ear just by um, making the sound itself heavily modulated right that's it for this video thanks for watching if you have some questions about the video then please leave a comment uh, below i try to answer everything also subscribe to the channel and use the small bell button if you want to be informed about new videos uh, on bitwig studio and audio production in general uh, if you want to support the content even more, then maybe think about a subscription on Patreon. Uh, it really helps. It, uh, it also motivates a lot to make new videos. And I want to also thank all the current supporters over on Patreon. Thank you. It really helps. If you uh, think about maybe buying Bitwig Studio or you want to extend your plan, then please use my voucher code Polarity in the webshop. Um, it gets you 10% of the price and it helps me a lot. And um, so why not use it, right? So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and stay healthy. Until next time, see you and bye.